Hello and in this second lecture we will be learning about what is an SOC or system on chip and we will also learn about an RV about uh, VLSI or SOC design flows and specifically uh, we will understand where verification stands on the overall design flow. So in this first diagram you can see there is a microprocessor uh, which has its own instruction and data caches with a shared bus and you have memories and several high speed IOs. Uh, there is a memory controller and there is a peripheral bus on which there are like several peripherals connected. So this diagram shows typically how a processor uh, subsystem looks like and traditionally this kind of a subsystem is designed using multiple chips and each of the chips connected on a motherboard. However with the current trends in silicon design which allows you to integrate more and more logic onto a single chip. It is now feasible to build a system like this which has all these components on a single chip and that is how these kind of designs are now known as system on chip designs and one thing to note is that in a system on chip design like this which has a full processor based system on a single chip each of the individual components are designed as individual IPs and these IPs are connected using certain standard interface interconnect protocols to build a full processor based system on a single chip. Now moving on to the second diagram, this diagram or this flowchart explains the VLSI or a chip design flow. So we start with uh, the design flow with design specifications. In this stage we capture all these specifications that needs to go into the design. Uh, then we follow that with the design entry phase. In this phase we we capture the specifications either using a schematic tool or using an HTL which is which stands for a hardware description language. Some of the popular HTLs are Verilog and System Verilog in the current uh, silicon designs. Once the design is entered into a schematic or an HTL then the next phase is to do a functional verification and power analysis. So functional verification stands for making sure that the design captured in the HTL is functionally uh, meeting the design specifications. Now we will learn more about how exactly this is done in the following sections. And once we are done with the functional verification that makes sure that the design specifications are captured properly in schematic or HTL. Then we go into a logic or test synthesis flow. In the synthesis flow we basically convert the schematic or HTL into actual gates with respect to the technology library that we might be using for the final uh, chip, this final chip. Uh, and then once the synthesis is done and once we have a gate level net list then we go through several stages like static timing analysis which looks for the actual timing paths and timing violations. We also do a gate level simulation to make sure that whatever is the gates formed out of synthesis still meets the design specification. We also do formal verification which is a way in which you uh, make sure that the gate level, gate netlist that is generated is formally equivalent to the design that is captured in the HTL. And in this, uh, in this phase we also do, there are tools which will help you to do power estimation such that you can make sure that whatever is the power that is estimated during your design specification still roughly matches uh, whatever is seen from the actual synthesized design. And once these set of uh, verifications are done then we the design goes into the back end phase where we do float planning which basically uh, places all the components and then we go do a layout design which actually connects layout design and placement and routing. All these three phases collectively does your placement of all your design blocks and connecting them together to uh, using the interconnects and the several metal layers. And then once we verify all of these then we do a final type out to the foundry and that and then you kind of uh, get the design uh, back from the foundry. So that's a high level overview about the overall design flow and in the following sections we learn more specifically about functional verification and how those are done and then followed that by that we will learn how system analog language can be used to actually do most of these functional verification tasks. So with that I will conclude this lecture and now in the following lectures we will st actually start learning towards the real objective of this course. Thank you.